This is a, a SPEC 20 machine, a spectrophotometer, and what that is is going to give us the output as far as the data is concerned. We've got it set, it transmitted. There's a couple things we have to do initially beforehand. We have to calibrate the machine, if you will. We have to set the uh, transmittance at zero and with nothing in it, and we have nothing in the chamber here. Also, just want to kind of draw your attention to this special type of glassware. Um, and these are cuvettes that are specially made for the SPEC 20 machines. And um, you put in water for our standard. So you fill it with water. You don't go above the red marking here. And you always want to take a chem wipe and wipe off anything on the outside, including fingerprints, because that can interfere with how the light transfers or is transmitted through the solution. So we set it at 0% T initially. Then what we will do is take a tube that contains distilled water. We'll place that in. And then it should measure 100. If it doesn't, we will adjust that. And that's pretty close, you see there at 100. So we've got the wavelength set at 480. So what I've done, what I've done is I've taken one of the solutions that we're gonna use doesn't matter which concentration I use to find the lambda max. So I'm gonna place this solution, wiping the sides, make sure there's no fingerprints. And what we're gonna do is read that number, 70.2. All right, I'm gonna take that tube out. I'm gonna use that same solution in finding the lambda max value. So now with nothing in here, what I want to do is change the wavelength. We're going in 20 nanometer increments, so we're going to go to 500 next. And as you can see, the machine is very sensitive. Well, I put water in the cuvette holder. Now we just have to go back to 100. Each time you change the wavelength, it's a good idea to do this. Um, I think the data is actually better if you take the time to calibrate it. Then we're going to put the same sample into the cuvette and then again each time I'm touching this I'm wiping the sides of this with a piece of chem wine. and then our number at 500 is 56.0 56.0 we're going to change the wavelength to 520, we're at zero. And then this is just with nothing in there, it's just a way that we recalibrate the machine every time we change the wavelength. If you're doing experiments at the same wavelength, you don't have to re uh, keep recalibrating the machine like this. All right, so I'm gonna put the distilled water, again, wiping off the sides with the piece of chem white. And it is important, there is a notch here to have the red marking, the line match up to the notch on the machine. So now we're gonna turn that to 100%. And then we'll place our potassium permanganate solution back in to the cuvette holder. And now this one at 520 is 45.0, 45.0. Change the wavelength to 540. Still at zero. Turn our knob back to for this particular machine, we just turn it almost all the way back, it's about as far as it will go. And then we'll put in the distilled water. Place our sample back into the tube. And at 540, we've got 45.2.
45.2. Change our wavelengths again. We're at zero to 560. Another thing you should always look for too, um, if there's any bubbles that's in the solution, you want to tap those and get those to the surface because you don't they can interfere with the interaction of light. At 580, we've got 78.8. you could break it down to even less than 10 nanometer increments. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to go crazy. I just want to try that one and see if I can get something a little different reading, especially since the numbers between 520 and 540 are so close to each other. transmission then that's going to give us the greatest absorbance so what we have done going through all this data is to set now the lambda max value at 530 so if we go back to the graph if we go back to the graph again you're going to take all these numbers which were percent transmitted and convert them to absorbance then you'll plot the absorbance versus the wavelength. These are the wavelengths that we use. So if you go from the top of that curve down, then it should cross that axis at 43.6. So the purpose of this is to find what that lambda max value is. And just to get practice in uh, graphing as well. 